All right, I wanted to make a video to follow up with uh, your video because uh, I feel like it's unfair to have all these settings here with no explanation of what they do. And even worse is they're really only implemented for one very specific menu at this point in time. And I'll give you a little historical background on why that is later. But for now, let me um, let me show you how this works. Okay, so when you call a menu, for example, the mode menu, it always pops up exactly where your mouse is. So users were running into trouble when their mouse was over here because the menu would get drawn right there and then you'd only be able to see half the menu. So problem one is people didn't like that the menu was popping up halfway off screen. What we decided to do is have the menus respect the borders of the 3D view. So in CI call the mode menu and it pops up over here so that it's all on screen. So part of the fundamental part of Pi menus though is that we want the interaction with the menu to be fast. So call the menu, look around, click isn't really how we envision them being used. It's more of a swipe and gesture. So edit, object, sculpt, object edit, right? So click, swipe, click, swipe, click, swipe. So what ends up happening is I'm not really looking at these menus, at least not anymore. I just kind of have a movement stored in my brain. So when we run into a problem is when we have uh, fast users who know where all the menu items are, and if they call a menu near the border, let's say they're working over here, and the menu now pops up over here, their movement is going to no longer correspond to the appropriate menu item. Okay, so what we did is we have a, this border delay. So for the first 0.3 seconds after the menu is called, if it's near the border, it treats the menu as if it's right here. Even though it's going to be drawn, that's a, that's a great kindergarten drawing, even though it's going to be drawn over here. All right. So watch what happens. Right, so if I were to call the mode menu and move up, I would really be selecting whatever's on this diagonal, so pose mode. But in my mind, I want to go to sculpt mode. So watch this. Ooh, surprise, we're in sculpt mode because it treated the menu as if it was right here. So object, so I gestured left to go to object, but I really only went as far that I was still in the edit mode button, but it still took me to object mode. Edit mode, object mode. Same over here. Edit mode, object mode. All right, so if we turn that delay down, or first let's turn it way up, and I want you to watch right here in the clock. So call the mode, boom, jumps over to edit mode. So you can see that initially it was picking sculpt mode, and then, boom, dropped over to edit. Right, so I think I've beat that one to death. And so if you turn it to zero, the menu is all, so this is probably best for beginners because they're gonna, if they happen to call a menu over here, they're gonna be freaked out by it not highlighting what they're expecting. For fast users, we found that point three was about the sweet spot. You know, if you need to see the menu and kind of revisit what you're after, if you're not familiar with the menu, point three seconds isn't too long to wait such that it'd be very rare for your brain unless you, I mean, this is how I felt. For a menu that I'm not familiar with, it took me more than 0.3 seconds to choose my menu item if I wasn't already familiar with it. All right, so if I called the menu and then wanted to look, pose, weight, paint, texture, paint, by the time I figured out where I wanted to be, the border delay had kicked it over into behaving as if the menu was where it was drawn. Okay, so hopefully I articulated that well. Okay, so what are we in? We're in object mode. So let's go into particle mode. And let me unhide have this little graphic here. So let's get it. And I'm sorry it's gonna be kind of small. I should wonder if double, you know what? Perfect time for double size. Okay. Wow. Okay, good. So, 
Um, we'll just kind of go through these in reverse order, actually. I'll do theta shift, then diamond, then squish. All right, so when we lay out items around a circle, so here is pi equals zero, or theta equals zero, here's theta equals pi over two, and here's theta equals pi over four. So if you if you cut them in perfectly even pi slices, right, things look normal if you're drawing a wedge. But when you if we examine the heights here, we see that th these items are a lot closer than these items. And so we run into a problem if we have a rectangular or kind of a funky uh, or not one-to-one -one aspect ratio of the buttons, you have this like big space here and it just looks odd to your eye. All right, so call the menu. It's like, hmm. So what the theta shift is, is the theta shift controls how far down we shift the non-cardinal items, right? So if I turn this up to 0.5, and that's in radians, or hmm, actually 0 to 1 controls a gradient between 0 shift and like a, an eighth of a radian shift or something like that. I don't remember how I, how I coded it, but so that shifts the item down so set now the item is drawn and it looks a little better visually. Okay. So that's theta shift. Now diamond, as you might imagine, and I should confess that I didn't do the math perfectly. Um, the math is fudged just a hair, but the diamond would shift a menu item from this position but first you pick an angle, and then it would shift back down here to right there. All right? But to write the equation of a straight line in polar coordinates, so the, the equation of a line based on an angle was not, I mean, I had a tough time with it. And I got it where I could get one line, but then I realized this is really four lines, right? And it's a, a discrete equation. So I was like, ah, it's a pain. So what I did is I kind of fudged the math a little bit and I just calculate the corrected distance on this line and then I use that later to do a little shift that makes it more diamond shaped. So the pi diamond only holds 100% true in the perfectly circular, uh, perfectly circular and theta shift equals zero. So if we, and that's probably going too far into it for anyone to care, but so, there. See, it draws the, all the items in a perfect diamond. All right, and the, so theta squish controls the, it, it, it really should be called data, um, should really should be called pi stretch. Because what it does, So what it does, it just stretches the menu out along the x-axis. And it gives you, kind of makes the aspect menu, aspect ratio of the menu match more the aspect ratio of the menu items. Right, so if you combine this with a 0.3, which I like, I think these were my favorite settings. And it's going to depend a little bit on the length of the word. Yeah, that's kind of how I liked it. Um, so eventually, we want to propagate this control to all the other, to all the menus where it's relevant. So if you take a look at some code, and don't be afraid, it's just a little, just a little Python code. Um, the mode menu was written a, a while ago, before we had, you know, before we had written the automatic layout function. So you see here, we have the menu. It's got a list of things that we want to draw. We're going to add something to it. We're going to add a sculpt button, right? So down here we de we define what the sculpt button does. It puts the mode to sculpt. Okay, so add the sculpt button to add the sculpt button to the list of items in the menu, right? 
label it sculpt mode, and then we had to tell it where to draw it. We had to manually figure out in pixels relative to the center of the menu where we wanted to put it. And then we tell it what icon to use. And so that's a hassle because what if you have six menu items or five or seven or four? You know, and then you have to kind of go in and like, you know, guess how to distribute them evenly. So we kind of decided on a list of priorities and how we wanted to lay out items. And so now you see in newer menus, you just add however many things you want, and you say, hey menu, organize yourself, and it handles it for you. So the only menu that we've really implemented this in is the particle comb menu. All the old ones are still um, manually assigned. So that's why you have to have a cube with hair and be in particle mode to see the effects of um, all these settings. But in the future, we'll propagate those changes. Then users can kind of tweak this. Um, and the, you know, the difference in how the menus are laid out in all the extremes of these aren't really that huge. So, that, I mean, these aren't like super high impact features, but it does give users just a little control to be able to tweak how things look to them. Um, the only problem I foresee is that what looks good for buttons kind of of this shape, you know, if you call the mode menu, because we have the word particle mode, you know, these buttons are a lot wider. So I assume that what looks good for this shape button may not look quite the same for this kind of shape menu, but we'll deal with that when we get to it. Okay, I hope that cleared everything up. Um, and I appreciate the video you made earlier. It you know, really helps us to have document people who make documentation for us because it doesn't always, the time doesn't always find itself for us to make documentation, so it's a huge help.